The Clark County School District, one of the largest in the country, has just unveiled a new equitable grading policy. It's the kind of policy that I would have loved when I was in school, which is about the harshest condemnation imaginable. Uh, the new system removes non-academic measures as factors in grading. So those measures include attendance, participation, responsibility, lateness. None of that matters anymore in terms of the grades. Students no, le- no longer need to worry that their grade in a class will suffer just because they aren't actually going to the class. Attendance was you know, considered a bare minimum requirement when I went to school. Now it has become a mere superficial detail. Also, all scores under 50% are abolished. Um, a child cannot get less than 50% on an assignment, even if they don't actually do it. Don't do it at all, and they spot you 50%. The word failing has been removed from the school's vocabulary. Now students earning a score you know, between 50 and 59% will be classified as emergent. Once again, I wish I had thought of this as a kid. No, Dad, I'm not failing math. I'm, uh, I'm emerging. The superintendent of the district, uh, Jesus Jara, recently defended the new policy, saying that, quote, our kids will graduate from this high school ready for the workforce in high-paying jobs. Yes, you know, those high-paying jobs where you don't need to show up or do anything or put in the slightest effort or actually succeed in any of the tasks you're assigned. Well, at least we can hope that these students, upon entering the job market, will be fired with similarly gentle language. Listen, I'm not firing you. I'm just saying your ass needs to emerge through the exit and never come back. That's all. This is, of course, far from the only equitable, quote-unquote, grading policy to be unveiled in the last uh, couple of years. It's the direction that all school districts will, will eventually go. All of them. Of course, attending class is kind of a moot point anyway, if there is no class to physically attend in the first place, though. Um, Indeed, Biden's Secretary of Education gave a press conference yesterday where he was very open to the idea of shutting down in-person learning once again this year. Let's uh, listen to that. Is there anything metrics-wise or numbers-wise, threshold-wise, that you would look at and say, all right, maybe in-person is not the best answer right now, even if the year gets started? Or is it in-person no matter what, we have the mitigation tools? You know, We know what works. And yes, we're looking at the metrics. And obviously, in close consultation with CDC and local health directors, because there are many local factors that contribute to whether or not a school should be open. Now, that was just a longer way of saying, yes, we will definitely be shutting the schools down at some point, at least partially. That's how I read it. That would be my prediction anyway. And it's probably for the best, actually, because as kids across the country um, are, if they go to school, going to be forced to wear masks all day in their classes. Every day, another school district instates a mask mandate. Most recently, in fact, our district right here in Nashville has been added to the list. All students and staff will be required to wear masks all day, everywhere, from the bus to the classroom. Now, as always with these mask mask, uh, mandates, the one thing that's missing is any sort of rational science and common sense-based reason for it. Instead, we hear only from the adults that it makes them feel better, and that it seems like it's necessary to keep the kids safe, though they offer absolutely no data to support it at all. Just to um, illustrate that point, here's a quick news report from our local ABC affiliate here in town. And and just listen to this, and uh, you tell me, do, do you hear anything like, you know, a data point, a reason? Let's Let's listen and find out feel a lot better sending my kid into school and I think uh, you know there are a lot of parents feeling that same way right now. Yeah. Th- there were some opposing parents but I think there were a lot more supportive parents and I was very happy to see that. Right now my son can't get vaccinated but he does have to go to school so I want to do everything I can to keep him safe in that uh, in that context. The city is open citywide, no citywide mandate. There is no data to support any of this right now. There is not no state mandate, mass mandate. So why are we doing this to our children? And our job is to make sure that we are protecting our students. We cannot teach them if we cannot protect them. And so I would like us to continue to follow with the proven mitigation strategies that are um, available to us. Masks will be available on a daily basis for anyone who forgets to bring theirs to school. The board will reassess this mask requirement when all Metro government issued mask grant requirements are ended. Well, there was at least, it was an eight to one vote on the school board. And you heard from the one sane one. I think her name was Fran Bush. And she was the, she was the only one who was against it. The rest of it though, what did you hear? I feel a lot better. 
Uh, you know, I feel better. We want to keep the kids safe. Lots of feels and wants here as, as usual, but is the mask necessary in order to keep kids safe from COVID? A virus which poses very little risk to them to begin with. Is it psychologically and physically healthy to have children wearing these pieces of cloth on their faces all day? How many of the kids even wear them correctly? How, how dirty do these things get by the end of the day? What effect does that have on their health? Do the health benefits actually outweigh the risks? Uh, these are all questions. And by the way, what does it do to children emotionally and developmentally to deprive them of the basic ability to see each other's faces? What does it do to children emotionally and de developmentally and psychologically to make them feel like, speaking of feels, make them feel like everyone around them is sick? That the air itself is toxic. Has anybody wondered about any of that? Is there any data on it? Do they care about the data if it does exist? The answer to that question, at least the last question, is no. The point is simply that the adults in charge feel better when the kids cover their faces all day. And that's what matters most to them. Now, of course, we can protest these kinds of measures, and we should. We can object. Just as we can object to the insane equitable grading policies, or to CRT in the schools, or the gender theory indoctrination, or any of the other radical left-wing indoctrination um, that, that public school children endure in every public school in America without exception. We can object. We should object. We can protest. We should, we should protest. But we're left still at bottom with a stark reality that when we send our kids into the system, we have no actual control over anything that happens. No actual control. No hands-on control. The schools own your kids as long as they are in that building and even when they're not in the building. That, anyway, is how the schools see it. And they don't hide the fact. And for all intents and purposes, they're right. The system has your child for most of his waking hours. The system is in charge of educating him and thus shaping his worldview and instilling him with a moral code, things which are inextricably linked to the act of education. That's another important point. People that say, well, we need to separate indoctrination and education. I, I just want my kids to be educated. I don't want them to be indoctrinated. That's impossible. The two are linked. You cannot have education without indoctrination. Unless you're educating a computer. Unless you're programming a computer. But when it comes to human-to-human -human education, it, it, is, it always comes packaged with a worldview. Always. No, it's not that I don't want my kid to be indoctrinated. I don't, want to be, I don't want him to be indoctrinated by them. I don't want him to be indoctrinated into that. And what happens is that the system eventually will have more influence over your kids than you do. Your kid will become what the system makes him. There may be rare exceptions to that rule, but they are very rare indeed. All of these things we're witnessing right now, from the masking to the indoctrination and everything in between, is the system exercising its ownership of the children sent into its care. The mask becomes, in some ways, the most profound statement of ownership, almost like branding on, a, on cattle. And that probably is the best analogy because that's how kids in the system are treated. They're like farm animals to be conformed into a herd and then herded along in whatever direction it prefers. If your kid goes to public school, then, I mean, it's good to get involved as much as possible and to show up at the school board meetings and to join the PTA and do all that you can do. But this cannot be the ultimate solution to the problem of the public school system because these are Band-Aid measures. This is you with a bucket on the beach struggling against the tide. You can't stop it. You can only hope to interfere slightly. Interfering slightly is better than not at all. But it's not a solution. So what is the solution? What's the answer? The answer is the one I always give, but not everybody wants to hear it. The solution to the public school system, in the end, is its abandonment. And then its collapse and its destruction. That's the solution. As long as we are determined to outsource our children's formation to the state, as long as we have given it that immense power, these problems will remain. There is never 
going to be a time when you can actually trust the state to educate your child. Never. It is too much power. It is too much power for any government at any time. But especially this government at this time. If we can improve anything at all in the system, it's only by degree. You can hope by getting involved to make it slightly less bad. But anything more than that will require fundamental and drastic change. You know, people say to me all the time, um, well, Matt, you, you point out all these problems. And what are the solutions? You don't give us any solutions. We want solutions. Well, my answer to that is, number one, there is value in pointing out the problem when much of the country doesn't see the problem. So we got to start with that. You know, you got to drag the darkness into the light. You got to start there. And in some ways, we haven't been able to get past that as a culture yet. I mean, we, we can't work to fix a problem until everyone sees that it is one. And so right now, we're at square one, just getting people to see that the problem exists. But the other thing with solutions is that when most people, when they say, I don't want to hear all these problems, I want to hear solutions. They don't really want solutions, do they? When they say solutions, they mean, okay, give me a five-step plan that's easy to do and will require almost no sacrifice on my part. That's what I want. You know, tell me to write a letter to these people. Tell me to hold a sign over here. Tell me to do this, to do that. And, uh, and then the problem will go away. You know, we are way past that. There aren't any, all, all of the serious problems in our culture, out of all of them, none of them can be simply solved that way. It requires drastic change. And so when it comes to the school system, if you really want to know the solution, it is to abandon it. It is to starve it to death by pulling your kids out of it. Oh, but we can't do that. We'd have to drastically change our lifestyle. I mean, we, we, we'd have to change everything. Yeah, I know. It's not easy. But it's the solution. There isn't another one. It's the only one. Now we have to decide, do we really want to solve the problem or not? Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.